Good morning. Good morning. Welcome all of you to joining us for worship at the Hampton United Methodist Church this morning. For those of you here, as well as friends listening on KLMJ and on Facebook, don't forget to share this morning. We're going to have some kids singing this morning. and want to have all the relatives see the kids singing, so share it on Facebook. I'm Pat Palmer, serving as the worship leader today. Kate Hinden will be lending her beautiful voice today to us uh, for the singing duties. We have a change in the main pulpit over there. I don't <laughs> Robbie Stevens is with us this morning. We're thankful that she's here. We're happy again to have the children's choir back for another season. Thank you to Glenda and Shiona and others who make this happen. And thank you to the parents who help and who have uh, their children involved in our youth program. Our youth program is truly the future of our church and we're very fortunate to have a great group. So thank you very much for that. Don't forget, we'll be having fellowship downstairs after the service. And remember, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. This morning is called to worship. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Reveal yourself to me, O God, and purify my heart and mind according to your will. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Cleanse my heart of impure thoughts and guide me with your spirit in a path that is pleasing to you. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Hold me close and give me the awareness of your constant presence and faithfulness. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Remind me of the many blessings you provide and the joy I can find in being a blessing to those who love you as well as those who are seeking. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. Reveal to us your truth and may your love be reflected through our hearts according to the example of Jesus, showing love for the poor, the sick, the old, the young, the lonely, and the lost. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. May we be led with compassion, generosity, and steadfast love of Jesus, open hearts, open minds, and open doors. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join us in singing our hymn, Near to the Heart of God. Thank you. 
knocks like Jesus. Knocks like Jesus. Then you sit down there. Wait, you guys, right there. Hey, big girls, you want to grab those for me? Today's a, a very special Sunday here. Oh, they want you to come over there so you can watch this way. Because we are going to give, we're missing one. We're going to give these four ladies 
a present. But we got to make them work for the present, right? You want to grab the trash now? Oh, girls, scoot this way. They can't get pictures of you because you're blocked by the microphone. Just a mind our setup here real quick. Okay, are we ready, girls? I told them in class there's going to be a very hard test that they can have to pass before they get their Bibles. So they're freaking out on me up here, right? Yeah, look at them. Hard test. Are you ready? So what's on your present now? What is that beside your name? What's that? What's this stuff? Just brown paper, right? Why would we wrap a present in brown paper? Because it's a surprise, yeah. But it's a surprise, but it's not a surprise. You know what you're getting. Why else would we wrap it in brown paper? What's brown mean? It's color. Ooh, I like that. The color of the cross. But we're wrapping it in brown paper because that's old. Uh Uh-oh. We're giving you a very old gift. In fact, your gift is over 2,000 years old. Can you believe that? And it's still around today, 2,000 years later. Okay, very, very, very carefully take off the brown paper. This is the hardest part of the test right here, ladies. Getting the paper off without ripping it all. Uh Uh-oh. But you don't have to be like super take forever. Yeah, rip it now. Once you got past that brown, rip it off. Uh Uh-oh. We got a problem, don't we, Cody? (laughs) Or Kendall, sorry. I know your name, I promise. We got a problem, don't we? Is that your gift? Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now we got gold. What's the gold mean? What's gold mean? If I have something of gold, what's that mean? That it's valuable, right? So your gift, thank you audience, I love the audience participation. Your gift is not only old, 2,000 years old, but it's valuable. What's that mean that's valuable? What did you say? It costs money, it does, sometimes. What else were you gonna say? Oh yes, it's very precious. It's valuable to people who, you also get it. You ready? It's valuable, it's important, it's got good stories. It's got good lessons, right? Okay, take off the gold. Carefully. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Should probably be using that gold paper. What did we... F- I'll wait till a couple more get it off. Just pull it out. Pull it out. This might be the hardest present they've ever had to open. Can't just rip it off. Okay, what in the heck? What are these? Yeah, but they're kind of a special newspaper. I thought I saw comics. Do you even read the comics anymore? Com- <laughs> the comics. What are the comics supposed to do? They tell you stories. What kind of stories? Sad stories? Funny stories, right? So in this gift, it's old, it's valuable, and there's funny stories. That's kind of a weird combination, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, take off your next layer. The next layer. I know. Oh. (laughs) They looked at me like, layer? Are you serious? There's more layers? Okay, I got rid of the comics. Now what do I got? Oops. Thank you. Now what do I got? Tissue paper. What color is your tissue paper? White. White. What does white stand for? Ooh. You think it's sheep? There is a sheep story in there or two. (laughs) White stands for purity. You ever heard that word before? Purity, it's pure. 
Okay, so white can stand for the purity of God or the light of God. And that, the white wrapping means that this Bible is given to us by God. And like we talked about in class, did the same people write every book in the Bible? No. But where did they get their inspiration from? From God. And so he helped them compile the book. Okay, you ready? This one you can just rip off. Finally. Now, ladies, now you have your own Bible, so we're in class. We don't have to use somebody else's, right? And what else can we do to this book that we can't do to anybody else's? Write in it. We've talked about writing in our Bible and important verses and marking them. Now make sure you open them. Make sure you all got the right Bible. Your name's on the inside. Okay, we're good. Got it? Now, I'm giving you an assignment because you know I like to give you homework, right? What do you think your assignment is? To bring it every Wednesday. Good job, ladies. Okay, can you say a prayer with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your word, the gift that guides us, the gift that teaches us lessons about life and teaches us how to treat other people. We pray that you use this word to inspire these young people and these old people in this building today, that you help us to resemble the Bible and to be your walking Bible every day of our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. It's only Sarah that could have a heckler during the children's sermon. <laughs> heckler. <laughs> uh, one, one little announcement. I, I, do, um, I do see some flying objects around the sanctuary here. I think they have a little bit of a wasp infestation. So um, as I was always told, you don't bother them, they won't bother you unless they're playing the organ and making that loud vibration noise. Uh, or you have an EpiPen, you're safe. Today's Old Testament lesson comes to us from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 3, verses 5 through 15. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream and said, and God said, for whatever you want to give me, I give to you. Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in a place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you've asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commandments as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon awoke and realized it had only been a dream. Please join me for hymn number 453, More Love to Thee, O Christ. <coughs>
please stand if you are able for the reading of our gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson today comes from Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. You may be seated. Well, first of all, I want to thank the kids for that music. I saw smiles all over the sanctuary. And today, I brought my t-shirt that I got with Walk to Emmaus. Um, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. I knew they were going to sing that today. I've got an echo on the speaker. Um, but thank you, kids. That was awesome. It was just so much fun. And uh, I could hear the energy in your voices. My goodness, that just sounded like quite the choir. So thank you. Thank you, Glenda, for the selection of music along with this theme that we have for today. This is Laity Weekend. And this is when pastors usually have the opportunity to take a couple of days off away from preaching, and non-clergy members are encouraged to fill in for their absence. So Pastor Dennis is taking a couple of days off, and um, we welcome the opportunity to share our faith. I've chosen to share some scriptures, songs, and thoughts that go along with my topic that I've chosen, The Heart of the Matter. So through this message, consider these words not just for me, but for yourself as well, from Psalm 19, verse 14. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing to your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. The heart is one of the most vital organs in any living creature. It pumps oxygen-filled blood from those, those chambers of the heart to the brain, to the muscles, to the lungs, to the skin and other organs, as well as to the tips of our fingers and the tips of our toes. A healthy heart is strong. It has a steady rhythm for a palpable pulse, and it relies on a good diet, regular exercise, and sometimes special care to continue its vital role in maintaining a body's viability. There are various factors which can cause problems with the heart's viability, heart disease, diabetes, stroke, or physical trauma. And then, of course, there are medications that are prescribed specifically for the heart's health, and sometimes surgery is necessary to correct rather serious issues. Likewise, the health of a spiritual heart is vital to our relationship with God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. For our spiritual, health, heart, our spiritual heart's health and strength relies on our beliefs. The strength of our heart's connection to faith should be palpable. It should be evident to those around us. And we exercise our faith. We give thoughtful care in how we practice our religion. All of these practices help maintain and sustain a closer walk with the one who loves us most. The viability of a spiritual heart is even more critical when you consider the promise of eternity. And be vigilant, because that heart is also vulnerable to the threats of harm to its viability. Earthly temptations, such as selfishness, lies, greed, hate, and other selfish desires and actions. So let's compare. Besides the clinical or physical references to our hearts, it's often referred to as a source of our emotions and our relationships, representing love or fondness between our family, friends, and other loved ones. But what influences us the most often seems to be things that give us pleasure, excitement, and a want for more of that. Examples might be chocolate. Some people get pretty excited about that one. Then there's fashion and lifestyle, possessions such as a house, a sports car, shoes. That may sound silly to some of us, but it's important to many people. And then there's sports and adventure and travel, 
a big bank account or investments. Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You cannot serve two masters. You can't serve God and money or other worldly treasures. We are expected to choose to be faithful, to at least evaluate our priorities and ask ourselves, is this the heart of the matter for me? The heart of the matter I want to talk about today has very little to do with the physical heart or the emotional joy and contentment you sometimes find in things or those earthly treasures. While spiritual experiences can cause your heart to race or give you a heartwarming feeling, the heart of the matter I'd like to talk about is the joy and contentment to be found in the love of Jesus Christ. It's that want for more, more of the trust, confidence, and assurance found in him and his love. Good spiritual heart health is vital to maintaining the viability of our soul and relationship with God. It nurtures and helps us to realize and have a better understanding of God's heart and his unconditional love and desires for us. A healthy spiritual heart makes pleasing him a greater priority in our lives, and it results in a want for more. The Bible makes references to the heart more than 500 times, and even more than 1,000 times, depending upon which translation that you read. Don't worry, I'm not going to read a thousand scriptures to you this morning. But there are some key verses that show the love of God and the value of, that he places on our heart, the heart of the matter, and the value of our hearts to him. The book of Psalms probably mentions it more than any other book in the Bible. And throughout the Gospels, Jesus speaks of the heart as sacred in its devotion to him and to God's love. Jesus acknowledges a heart of love as being divine, as well as human. It's divine in its mercy, compassion, grace, and awareness of the faithfulness and presence of God. And the human part is the emotions and the desires. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your mind. That statement is repeated in various scriptures. And Jesus also mentions that the human heart is also capable of evil thoughts and actions, such as greed, deceit, envy, slander, and arrogance. But he also speaks of forgiveness, understanding and grace that God provides when those human frailties cause us to mess up sometimes. The heart might be described as the center of a person's physical and spiritual being. Some might refer to their heart as their soul, a source of their compassion and passion, as well as a special awareness or understanding that gives them assurance, confidence, a sense of peace. Each of us has a God-given core to our being, a built-in light or flame. Some experience this with more intensity than others, and it may change throughout our lives, but it's there for us to explore and to expand upon for God's purposes. There are many familiar terms in regard to the heart that refer to the spiritual heart, a grateful heart, a heart that's joyful, worshipful, willing, generous, loving, obedient, and there are times that the heart can be vulnerable to human factors. The Bible speaks of a hardened heart that's unwilling to listen or to care. It also talks of a proud heart that lacks humility and seeks to serve oneself or a select few. Many of us have experienced grieving, troubled, or broken hearts, where you're facing fears, seeking hope and assurance, or coping with a void from a tragic loss or shattered dreams. And perhaps you're familiar with a change of heart. At various stages of your life, your physical heart may be the same, but your spiritual heart discovers new perspective. The United Methodist Church uses the slogan, open hearts, open minds, open doors, which challenges us to demonstrate that mindset. Is it evident? Is this the heart of the matter for our church? 
Are our hearts open? Open to the love, mercy, and forgiveness, and compassion, and genuine willingness to serve according to Christ's example? I invite you to open your heart to what he offers, and then open your mind to the possibilities of what we as a church can bring to our families, to our church, to our community, to other believers. And then open the door of your heart. The kids sang about that this morning. Open the, open the door of our church and invite Jesus in. And see, that portrait reminds us over here. That portrait over on the wall next to the door. It's called Christ at Heart's Door. Have you ever noticed that there's no latch on the outside? We're to understand that the latch is inside, where it's up to us to open that door and invite Jesus inside. Let's make sure the doors of our church are open to everyone who seeks his love, his forgiveness, and his powerful presence in their lives, in their circumstances, and in their want for more of what he has to offer. We each have our own individual call to faith, to our relationship with God. Some are more willing than others to answer that call, but the call will always be there according to God's plans for you. Even when we hesitate, even when we have all of our excuses and reject the nudging from the Holy Spirit, God is persistent, and he won't give up on his plan for you or your role in his plan. So search your heart. For where God has made, where he may be calling you to serve, to reach out to those in need, to make a difference that you'd like to see in your home, in your church, in your community, or in your world. So let's agree that the heart is central to our physical and spiritual being, a source of life, as well as a source of compassion and wisdom. Many of the Bible verses I'd like to share with you today may sound familiar. From 1 Kings 10:24, the whole world sought audience with Solomon to hear the wisdom God had put in his heart. That refers to our scripture this morning. God granted him the wisdom that he had asked for. From 1 Samuel 16:7, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. From Psalm 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song I praise him. The book of Psalms is abundant with references to the heart. Another example is Psalm 94, 19. Lord, when doubts fill my mind, when my heart is in turmoil, quiet me and give me renewed hope and cheer. When we pray from the heart, when words escape us, God knows our hearts. He knows our thoughts. He knows our hurts, our fears, as well as our needs. God listens. From Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You do realize you don't have all the answers, right? Accept the fact that you don't know what you don't know about every person, about every circumstance, but the Lord knows, so trust him. Proverbs 19, 21, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. The physical heart has a rhythm, but the spiritual heart beats with a built-in awareness of right and wrong prioritizing what matters most in our lives. It helps us to define the heart of the matter when facing life's challenges. And the prophets describe matters of the heart, particularly human struggles, temptations, evils, or being lost along the way. From Isaiah 32, 6, For fools speak folly, their hearts are bent on evil. They practice ungodliness and spread error concerning the Lord. The hungry they leave empty, and from the thirsty they withhold water. We are called to have hearts of compassion for those in need, not counted among the ungodly, or those seeking power and glory for themselves, with disregard for others. 
Jeremiah often writes of God's references to the heart. From chapter 17, 10, he writes, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. God knows your heart. He always knows. From Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Seek him with all your heart, not half-heartedly, and you will find him. And from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, 45, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So when you speak from the heart, Do your words show what's stored up there? Is there stored up any anger, frustration, shame, or revenge? Fill your heart with goodness, with humility and kindness, with love, compassion, and wisdom, and ask God for discernment of truth in what comes out of the mouths of others. I've been drawn to the series of The Chosen, a portrayal of the Bible stories and ministry of Jesus. I've learned more about his disciples, his followers, the Jewish authorities and culture, as well as the Roman influence during that time. One scene in particular that caught my attention is one with Mary Magdalene. Jesus had previously redeemed and healed her spirit from demons, and she became a devoted follower of Jesus. In this particular scene, she had withdrawn for a time to a previous lifestyle, and some of the disciples had to retrieve her and bring her back. When she faced Jesus, she was obviously ashamed and expressed her feelings of unworthiness. But it was Jesus' response that impacted me most. He said to her, I just want your heart. The Father just wants your heart. Give us that, which you already have, and the rest will come in time. Did you really think that you would never struggle or sin again? Look up. Look at me. I forgive you. Maybe some of you have struggled or been drawn away from your relationship with God, or for some reason you feel unworthy or ashamed. Those are also feelings that come from the heart. And God is always ready to forgive and start fresh with you as well as those that you may be praying for in their struggles. He loves, has a love for everyone, which includes grace, even when we don't deserve it. Give him your heart. Open your heart and let him in. Let me close with a verse from Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Those who are lost, struggling, and or seeking are watching our example. God's also watching. So may your hearts be full, flowing with strong, healthy, and loving spirits. And may the heart of the matter for us be our devotion to Jesus Christ, which is so vital to our life, our faith, our truth, our peace, our great joy, and God's great pleasure. The heart of the matter is that your heart matters. God loves you with his whole heart. So trip the latch. On the other side of the door to your heart, let him in. Let him in with your whole heart. To God be the glory. Amen. Please join me for our offertory hymn in the Faith We Sing book, number 2160, Into My Heart.
accept these offerings and bless the generosity provided by your servants in ministry. Instill in us faithfulness to our calling and open our hearts, minds, and doors to your love and compassion for your purpose and your plan. Bless us with opportunities to reflect the heart of Jesus beyond these walls. O oh Lord, hear us as we pray the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the Faith We Seen book again, number 2140, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have lied in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Came into my heart. Floods of joy. benediction from Paul's letter to the Ephesians that is relevant to us today. From Ephesians 3, 16 through 19, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Holy Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. Amen. 